Hello everyone, it's your favourite queen, Android18 here, and welcome to another Dragon Ball video. Today, it's not a reaction, however, I'm actually going to be talking about this article called Six Things About Dragon Ball Z That Make No Sense, and I've actually looked through this before, and it is just terrible. Like, every single point is just really bad, so I want to go through it because I think it'll be fun. This article was made in 2015, and it's by a guy called Tristan Cooper. And I'm not going to leave his Twitter in the description. However, I am going to leave a link to the actual article so you can check it out. I honestly don't recommend really looking at it because it's got loads of like really intrusive ads on it and it's not worth looking at anyway, but I'm going to read all the points anyway. So yeah, I'll just get into it. So number six is why isn't everyone using guns? So I'm actually going to read this. So it says Dragon Ball Z is all about super powerful dudes screaming and yelling and occasionally punching each other. I get that, but it doesn't negate the fact that handguns are so much more practical than a fist fight. You don't charge up a 9mm. You don't need a scouter to tell the power level of a .357 Magnum. With guns, there's no pomp or circumstance. Instead, you just point and pull the trigger to get an instant result. Then again, maybe you don't need guns when you can do this. And it shows Frieza blowing up a planet. The absence of guns in DBZ is mostly due to the fact that everyone is capable of a super powerful energy blast who needs an AK-47 when a Kamehameha is practically a hummer-sized bullet with a lock-on targeting. And yeah, regular ammo will probably just bounce off of almost all the Z fighters, but not all of the heroes are invincible fireball machines. Some of them get stuck on Dragon Ball Guard duty. So what use is a gun against someone impervious to bullets? Look at it this way. Technology in Dragon Ball is so far along that Dr. Jero was able to create self-aware, super powerful androids that can learn, fight, and even have sex with Krillin. If something like interstellar space travel is the norm, why couldn't Bulma and her dad whip up a gun that could shoot mini destructo discs? Okay, that's just stupid. Giving the weak characters guns would level the playing field, or at least afford weaker characters some form of self-defense. It sure would be watching Bulma cower in a cave for weeks at a time, and it would give your arms just something to do in between being dead and or useless. Okay, that's just stupid. Everyone wins with guns. Okay, so I completely disagree with this point. It's just, I think most of you guys can just tell it's dumb. Like, a lot of the time, Bulma used to have guns in Dragon Ball, but they eventually, like, didn't do anything. And the reason they don't use guns is because against any powerful threat, it's basically useless anyway. It's, you might as well not have one. It's actually more, like, bad for them, because if they shoot and the bullet bounces off of them, it could actually, like, hurt the person who shot the bullet, so. But yeah, we don't need guns because Goku and Vegeta are around to, like, beat everyone so that point is just dumb and i hate this point number five goku might be the dumbest person alive this is just dumb already i actually don't feel like even reading this one they're basically saying goku hit his head when he was a baby and goku is pretty much dumb because he's dumb and he's talking about like he even gave frieza energy and stuff like that i'm, I'm not reading for this point because i don't agree with it it's just completely stupid it's true goku's a little dim sometimes but he is incredibly smart when it comes to fighting, and from what we can see in the original Dragon Ball, Master Roshi actually teaches Goku and Krillin basic English and math, so, and that's also in the manga, so Goku isn't, is like, he's not very smart when it comes to like normal social cues, however, Goku is pretty smart, like, when it comes to fighting, and he's shown that he's smart in different areas, so it's just a really dumb point, and he even passed the math test in Dragon Ball Super, when uh, Boo didn't, so yeah, stupid, let's continue. You can probably see what kind of caliber of article we're dealing with now. Just gonna have a little drink of the Pepsi Max. Okay, this is the dumbest one. Number four is Mr. Popo. It shows a picture of Mr. Popo and just says, I mean, come on, and that's it. Like, that's not even writing about Popo, but that's just embarrassing. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Popo. Mr. Popo is a freaking genie. He wears a white turban, because that's what genies normally wear, and He's a flippin' genie. Like, he's not, like, supposed to be racist or anything. Toriyama made him a genie. He's black. He's got red lips. He's a flippin' ge magic genie. So, I just think this is really dumb. Mr. Popo is a genie, and there's nothing wrong with him. I actually really like Mr. Popo, actually, so... Yeah, completely wrong. Ugh, this website has really annoying pop-ups. Okay, so, number three is... Everyone should be using Solar Flare all the time. I think this is probably, like the most viable one out of all the different bits they've put on here. But yeah, I don't really agree with it. Like, sure, they should use the solar flare a little more often, maybe. But 
if they used it all the time, the show would be extremely boring. You guys have got to remember, Dragon Ball as a manga and a show is about fighting and, you know, things like that. And it has to be entertaining. And if every character just who knew it just spammed Solar Flare, it would just be stupid. But Sal uses the Solar Flare a lot, unfortunately. Okay, so the last couple of points. Number two, Goku might be the worst parent alive. This is pretty much like the other point, but this is just stupid. Like, it's true, Goku isn't winning any Father of the Year awards. However, he does love Gohan and Goten an incredible lot. Just to prove that, he literally dies at the start of Dragon Ball Z to save, like, Gohan and the world from Raditz, but mainly Gohan at the time. He literally died for Gohan. He came back and saved Gohan after he trained with King Kai. He, he obviously cares about Gohan and his family. Like, there's multiple different times in the series where Goku, you know, look, saves his son. For example, in Dragon Ball Super, where he, when he saves Gohan from Frieza. Also, not to mention, he sacrificed himself a second time when Sal was going to blow up the planet. And that was even after he told Gohan to kill Sal, and Gohan just toyed with him. And he didn't even seem mad towards Gohan, he just let himself die and saved everyone. So, yeah, this is just a stupid point. But although Goku isn't the best parent, he's definitely not the worst. Come on. But yeah, he brings up physical abuse and punching your child. But like, you gotta think about this. Although Gohan didn't have the best childhood, it's either Gohan uses her, his, like, dormant power, or everyone dies. Take your pick. Would you rather give Gohan a slightly tougher childhood, or would you rather the world be destroyed? So, it's a really stupid argument, and the only argument that he brings up in this point that does make a little sense is when, um, Goku sends in Gohan against Sal, and, um, Goku doesn't realise Gohan's gonna get trashed at the beginning. And it's true that Piccolo has to point out to Goku that Gohan doesn't like fighting. However, this was mainly a point that Goku kind of had to do because if you think about it, if Gohan wasn't pushed, he would have never got to Super Saiyan 2. And if that wouldn't have happened, like the world would have been destroyed by Sal. So although it's a little silly on Goku's part, like it was kind of necessary in the end and it panned out okay. It's just that Piccolo kind of made him feel a bit guilty about it, and he kind of should have felt a bit worse than he did until Piccolo pointed it out, but sure, that's one of Goku's, like, awkward moments, but overall, it was for the greater good. And number one is just stupid. Just give Krillin immortality already. Okay, they talk about how much Krillin dies, and let's be completely honest, Krillin doesn't even die that much. Like, when you think about it, he dies in the original Dragon Ball, so I believe Tambourine. Sorry, another drink break there. And then he, like, gets killed by Frieza. And when you actually look at how long Krillin was on Namek, he did incredibly well in that fight, and he even hurt Frieza a lot too, cutting off part of his tail. And then he also died in the Boo saga, where everyone else died because Boo blew up the planet. I died as well, you know? So I don't see why everyone's like, oh, Krillin dies all the time. Sure, Krillin gets hurt a lot, I'll agree with that, but that's only because Krillin's brave enough to face people that are way out of his league and power and speed. But yeah, I totally disagree. Like, Krillin died twice, and that isn't even that much, because when you think about it, Goku's died twice as well. So, you know, Krillin died a third time, but that's when everyone died, so you can kind of take that away from his tally. So, Krillin's died as much as Goku, you know? So, and that isn't even that much, so overall that point's just dumb. And that's literally, like, the whole article. It, I'll leave a link to it in the description, but I don't recommend checking it out. This article is from Dorkly, and I know they have a YouTube channel, but this article is just terrible. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the script in the comments. I was gonna say the description then, that was kind of funny. But yeah, if you enjoyed me talking about this article, make sure to hit the like button. That really helps the channel. I'm trying to get, you know, more videos out, so hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications for whenever I upload a video. Comment and other things you want me to go over, like other articles or other things you want me to talk about in Dragon Ball or even react to. And also I have a Discord, a link to it's in the description, as well as the link for my Patreon. If you want to support the channel and, you know, to be honest, just liking my videos and watching them is enough, enough, but if you want to try and help me do YouTube full time, I have a link to my Patreon down below. It would really mean a lot to me if you consider checking that out. But anyway, more importantly, I hope you have an amazing day. And also, don't forget everyone, subscribe to me because I'm definitely 18.